All right, we're going to pick back up with our next lesson here, and we're going to focus on both the smoothing preview system that's inside of Maya and also the smoothing tool, which will then lead us into reviewing sculpting tools uh, and all of the fun stuff that you can do with a higher polygon count model. So first off, um, I'm going to open up here. I have a, a little base model I've been working with here. I'm going to make visible. This is a you know a low poly kind of extruded form, um, bridge two shapes together, and I've got this interesting shape, right? So it's low polygon count. Um, if I go ahead and select this model, you can see all of its polygons on it right now. And so if I go ahead and hit the number two on my keyboard, I can see a smooth preview of what this object will look like after it's been smoothed to a certain degree. Uh, this also has the green outline on it as kind of the control cage, the original um, kind of low poly model. And if I choose face here, I can kind of grab those original sides and continue to kind of edit and modify and uh, change the shape of it. And, you know, really play around with the model, which is a great way to control uh, what's going to be a smooth model, but with like just a few control points. Once this is smooth, there's, you know, this is going to be made up of hundreds or thousands of polygon faces, and it's a lot harder to do these big moves uh, with ease and these shifts in the form uh, like it is right now. If I hit number three, obviously the cage goes away. Uh, I'm still kind of these kind of like curved versions of the bigger polygons that control it, which is cool, and I can still manipulate all of that, right? Um, now, one thing I always like to point out is in the smooth mode, you can actually control the degree to which it's smoothing in this kind of preview mode. If you hold down function, the function key on your keyboard, and you use the up and down arrows, um, oh, hold on, I had an auto save going there. I can actually increase or decrease the amount of smoothing in the preview. So that's no smoothing. That's like if it was um, smoothed um, to twice the number of polygons, three times the number of polygons, four times the number of polygons. I think it only goes up to four or five. I think five. Um, so it's a really nice way, depending on how much you want to smooth, how many polygons you want to work with, you can get a nice even preview. I usually leave around like one, two, I'll go to like three. Um, on the preview there because I rarely go more than three times um, on smoothing. So anyway, nice way to be able to control the amount of smoothing in the preview. So again, if I hit number two, I'm back to the preview with the cage, and number one, I'm back to the original object. All right. Now, if I want to actually smooth the object, this will be more of a permanent process where the smoothing preview, I can just peek and then go back to the polygon. Once I smooth it, it's smooth, especially after I save, there's no going back. But as a backup, in case I ever need to get back to this low poly uh, model, I'll often just duplicate it. So I'll hit Command or Control D, and you'll see over here in my outliner, I now have two of them. I'll choose one and hide it. Uh, so now I just have the one polygon active, this other one is hidden. I hit H to hide that, by the way. I can hit H and it'll come back again just to so you can see it's there. There's the second one sort of off in space. So I hit H and it hides it from the scene. And you can see in the outliner, it kind of gets like a light gray color to it. So I'll click on this one now. And now we're going to get into smoothing, all right? So uh, there's two places you can smooth your object. You can either go to Mesh and go to Smooth. And you can see there's actually an extra smooth uh, menu here. I could kind of set like how many subdivisions I want to do. And then there's a couple types of smoothing. This Maya Catmull Clark or the open subdivision. Uh, a bunch of other settings you can play around with in here that are a little bit more advanced. But for right now, I'm going to stick with the default. Um, if I just smooth it once, you can see that's one number of divisions that divided everything um, in half basically. Now I could do it by two. And now it's smoothed even further, a factor of two. Let's do that factor of three, like my original preview. That's pretty good. That's going to give me a lot of polygons, a lot of vertexes to work with. But you know what? We're going to actually work with some of these more advanced brush tools um, that want even more subdivisions. So I'm going to go ahead and do four and get a really dense. Now, this is going to increase render time. This is going to make you know more processing um, for your computer to handle. So if you don't have a good graphics card, if you have a low CPU, you're not quite meeting the Maya um, minimum requirements, then you might want to ease up on your subdivision, OK? And how much like you know brush detail you do. All right, that's good. I like the smoothing on that. I can hit the arrow. I'm sorry, the uh, selection tool or Q to go to kind of out of the smooth. And there we go. The other place you can smooth from is the modeling toolkit. 
Um, so if I come up here and I pull up the modeling toolkit, which I believe is this guy, the hammer and the cube, you'll see here's a smooth button. Um, you have a bunch of stuff in here, Boolean tools, you have combine and separate, extrude and bridge, bevel, add divisions, multi-cut, a, a bunch of the common kind of edit mesh and mesh tools that you're going to use in polygonal based modeling in Maya. So a nice place to know that that, that exists there as well. We'll go back to attributes. So at this point, we are ready to start exploring some of the sculpting tools, which is really cool. Um, and so at this point, I'm going to go up to my top right here and I'm going to change my workspace to sculpting, which actually just kind of refocuses everything to work a little bit better with your sculpting tools. I got a nice open screen here. I've got some extra options over here on the right. Obviously, tool settings are coming up because these are individual tools and we're going to want to control the settings on them as we begin to sculpt, right? So I'm just going to do a quick overview of the various sculpting tools. There's even more in Mudbox um, if you want. That's a separate program that you can kind of pair up with Maya. Um, and but there are some great ones here in Maya. So let's just take a look. So if I click on the first one, which is lift a surface, the first thing you really need to do by default, these settings over here for this particular brush are going to be really high. Your setting, your strength might be 100. The size could be a lot larger. Like as I roll over it right now, you can see that the size of my brush is the size of that kind of black circle. Um, the reason there's an extra little black dot below it is because I actually have my uh, symmetry on right now. I'm going to turn symmetry off. I'll show you what symmetry does in a little bit with this. It works. It's a nice tool, particularly if you're doing character modeling. All right, cool. So really bring down the size of your brush. If I make this brush too big, you can't even see the boundaries of it. And if I go and click on it, it's actually going to make the whole object change because it's affecting the whole thing. So you really got to scale this down according to the size of your model in your scene uh, and the units of measure that you're using. So again, I'm going to go back to, I think I had that at 0.4. There we go. Uh, I'm going to go to point 0.2 and have an even smaller brush there. And then bring that strength way down too. If this strength is up too high, whoa, like who wants that? You know, like, I mean, maybe if I'm making like some kind of crazy sailfish or something, but that's pretty extreme. So I'm going to bring that back down to like one. Let's just see what one does. So doing one, I'm still getting a pretty extreme kind of crazy um, fin there. I mean, that's what this guy's supposed to do. This brush is literally called lift a surface, but I don't want it to go that much. So just type in an incremental amount, so 0.25. Let's try that. Maybe I can still get that like, there we go. That's reasonable. And you can see it's a very nice, smooth um, form that I'm pulling out of it. And that's because of the level of subdivision that I have. If your subdivision's too low, um, it kind of looks like tinfoil crinkled up. So you really want to have enough subdivision for the amount of detail that you want to bring into it. So this lift tool is really nice and smooth, um, does some really nice stuff to the model. You can get these little graceful bulges and, and ridge lines and things like that, depending on your settings, right? Cool. Uh, next tool on there, this is smooth the surface. So maybe I don't like what I'm doing. You can almost use it like an erase tool. Again, affect the, the strength and the size. But I can just, whoop, I didn't choose it. Let me grab it. There's the smooth tool. Okay, I can actually just smooth everything back out that I did and sort of almost return it back to the original mesh in a way. Um, it doesn't exactly like, uh, it's not like an undo brush, but it really does do a great job. So if maybe I just made a few areas, I liked what I did, but a few areas were a little extreme. I can kind of come in here and brush them back into a smooth zone again. You can see how I'm just kind of taking that detail right back out. Again, this is all about adjusting the strength and the size. This time I left my strength at 100. It's not as extreme on the strength, but you've got to make sure the size of your brush is what you want to work. But maybe I want to, you know, reach a big, a bigger part of it on this one. Like, oh, look how big that is just at, at level two. Let's make that a one. And then I can kind of smooth the whole thing evenly together, which is, you know, a really nice feature. Sometimes you just want to take a little bit of the de that detail away that you just put in to kind of find that equal balance. All right, um, we're going to come back to this uh, smooth uh, surface of a mesh without changing its original shape. Um, that's a really nice tool as well because the other smooth can change the original shape. So, you know, if I come back here, Oh, actually, I'm sorry, I meant to redo those. Let me see, come in. Let's bring a few of these back at least. Um, this is a nice one here. The smooth the surface without changing the original shape. Again, um, bring this down a little bit. There we go. 
it'll just smooth these areas without completely like taking it back down to the original right it's just a more subtle smoothing that it does with that particular tool so you know I can up that I could say maybe like 200 and it does a little bit more I think that particular tool works pretty well when you get more kind of like crinkly textures more spiky stuff so I'll come back and we'll look at that one again soon all right this one is pull a single vertex along and any direction that you want I really love this one I can just kind of like it grabs the nearest vertex and then just kind of like softly pulls out from that area so maybe I want to make like little ridge bumps along here that could be kind of cool a little dragon tail kind of back to this guy uh, again this is going to be all based on the size so that's at point two right now go point five and I'm going to pull a much larger area with that fall off and you can kind of control the strength of that as well which is really great now I could turn symmetry on um, I could click up on here and go to object X you'll see uh, there's that black dot to the left on sort of the tail end as I pull here it's adjusting there as well so that's in the X dimension this particular model doesn't work it doesn't really need this but maybe you're doing a face with like bilateral symmetry and you want like an eyebrow that you're sculpting out on one side to affect the other side then that's a really great tool so anytime you're looking for symmetry you can kind of play around with these and kind of see how that, that little black line is showing up and adjusting it as it goes now, obviously I don't have to stick with X I can go Y as well and then I get sort of a vertical above and below they're overlapping a bit so you're not seeing it as much and then Z as well there we go as I do it there there we go we can kind of see it from the two sides that's actually pretty effective on the Z I can really push and pull all right cool so we're gonna continue going here um, sharp and soft edges we'll come back to that because we don't really have any sharp edges right now level a surface this really just like flattens out areas um, so I could kind of come back in here um, that one's kind of it's a little big right now so let me change my size down 0.3 and let's take the strength maybe to like 20 there we go that's a little more subtle and let's turn that uh, symmetry off so I'm kind of smoothing out certain areas it really just flattens it though it's less smoothing and more flattening to make it's really good for kind of making plateaus so maybe I often show this tool when I have people making sort of like big rolling landscapes if you need to make a plateau for like a city in the midst of some mountains this is a great you know sculpting tool just like if a leveler came in and kind of leveled out a, an area to build a house or something like that oh uh, next on the list softly lift a surface <laughs> you'll see that there's some of these tools are just like um what's the difference between that and the other tool I just looked at you know they all do a little something different and you know try them out try adjusting their tools and see what they do but yeah um, between that and the vertex one a little subtle difference randomly spray a stamp imprint okay this is gonna make some crinkly areas you've got a bunch of stuff in your content browser up here that you can choose between you can also load in your own files as well if you wanted to um, but there's a bunch of great stuff in here so I'll choose this one this little black and white spots and you can see whoa that's making some spiky details kind of appear uh, on the surface if I look there you can kind of really see it I'm gonna uh, just put a few more of those in there obviously I could really take the strength of this down like 0.2 and then it wouldn't nearly do as much it does a little bit but maybe not as extreme as it did there let's do like 0.4 see maybe that's a happy in between so you can play around with all these different shapes and kind of see what they add they'll add like different little like surface details little interesting textures and and some are more extreme than others. I kind of like that one. That's like pinched skin or something, or just kind of like ripply skin. Um, this is a really good one, though, for me to go back and show you. Um, I believe it was the sh soften sharp edges tool. So I'm going to click on that, and then I'm going to soften these guys back up a little bit. So, you know, it just kind of like pinches them in, smooths them down, shrinks them a little bit. I don't know if it really softens them, but it kind of reduces them. I think that's probably a better name for it, like the reduce sharp edges tool. Okay, keep going here we've got to stamp a pattern repeatedly so this takes again one of these different black and white patterns or image patterns um, 
that you have here and you can always add a folder of different images that you want to work with and now you can see how it really kind of just stamps it and I can kind of drag it all the way around and that's really nice right um, you know it's playing with the vertexes you got to watch out you don't want this whole thing to look like tinfoil but if you do these subtly you can really create um, some neat effects I'm gonna undo all those and if I bring that strength down to say like 0.1 there we go. That's a little better. That's a little more subtle. That's really giving a nice kind of like little rippled surface effect there. Uh, kind of like a little crystal vibe to it. And then uh, another stamp, you can just do single stamp. So imprint a single copy of a stamp on a surface. Um, again, say I'll do it to the back end here. I can choose any of these. So I'll grab this uh, RG blue kind of little underwater texture. And then I can kind of like really like I'm clicking and dragging to like scale this up and then boom let go and it takes that image again to kind of like pull it out. It doesn't exactly represent the image but it does a pretty good job. The more subdivision you have the more detail you end up getting out of it. Some work better than others. I'll take this one here this little plant detail. I'm kind of getting some of that structure to it as well. Um, so I could take that down. That's already at 0 0.09. Let's go 0 0.05 and see how that does. You can kind of rotate it as well and then let go and it'll pop that texture out for you. So again, it's all about playing with the strength and the size on these. Uh, beyond that, we have build up a surface. This is kind of like if you like took the lumps of clay and just kind of like kept building them, you can just hold down the mouse and, and move around and it'll really kind of like just bulge out and build up at the area. Again, strength and size controls on it. There's also fall off controls, which kind of like play with like how it eases uh, at its edges of the brush to kind of bulge all these out and make this really big area and bulge out all that detail that I just brought in which is fine. Uh, there is a really nice tool here um, where is it? It's the relax tool well, I guess I thought that was called the relax tool the soft and sharp edges will soften these all back. But there was one tool that really kind of like evens them back out. Yeah, that guy, um, it's nice. It kind of like, see how it's like cleaning up? I'll, I'll undo that. See how I get these really jagged um, vert line edges and vertexes? I love how this one, the uh, relax tool, um, which is this guy right here. When you move over it, roll over it, it says smooth the, sh the surface of a mesh without changing its original shape. Well, the name of that is relax, and it's a little different than smoothing. It really just helps kind of like even out your vertexes, which is really good because you can kind of keep shapes, but like really clean up when you have stuff like that that might later turn into like a UV mapping issue. So these ones right here, that really just like relax those. And I love, that's actually like really improved it. It kind of relaxed the edges, but still kept some of the original bumpiness. Again, if I come over here, you can see how that's working as I zoom into it. It's just kind of like evening everything back out a little bit. So I find that relax tool to be really effective because you don't ultimately want all these little spikies. I mean, sometimes they'll look good, but a lot of times they're just going to make your textures look really bad. Um, so the relax, relax tool can help you kind of find a happy medium there, right? There we go. There we go. Get rid of some of those really rough chunks sticking out. All right. Um, beyond that, we've got some other ones. Minimize or reduce uh, or remove raised areas. Yeah, very similar. Kind of just, you know, soften these, like, raised areas. So, again, this is a little bit of repeat, but, you know, that one does it a little bit differently than the Relax does. Maybe a combination of the two is what we're looking for fill in valleys on a surface. I'm going to do that after I cut some fine strokes. This one will like literally cut little valleys into a form, which you can always do by inverting one of the other tools as well. And then this one uh, kind of fills them back in again. It like helps kind of like, oh, you did too much, so let's smooth out that valley you just made. So if you need to make some wrinkles, you can kind of like work between those tools or if you need to make little pits and, and insets in an area, that actually doesn't look too bad. I'd probably still grab that relax tool and kind of just see how much, how big of an improvement that made to those, vert, like turning those all back into nice even quads. All these areas are smoothing, smoothing down as I relax them. There we go. Yeah, 
so we don't have like overlapping vertices and things like that. There we go. And pull a surface in a direction of a stroke. There we go. Yeah, um, that's definitely very much like, uh, you know, pull from a vertex. Um, I don't know, a little bit of repeat there. And then there's inflate, which definitely makes it sort of like bubble up in a particular area. You know, depending on what kind of settings. I always turn this one way down, but see, I knock that up to like six. You can really kind of bulge out. Whoa, yeah, that's a really, see, I'm turning it inside out there and ripping it out. Not so good. Um, but, you know, I can bulge some of those areas and then maybe relax it back again. So I have actually like clean meshes and not creating holes. There we go. I don't know if that's ever going to be able to relax a lot. That's creating some like, you know, non-manifold forms. I have to work there for a little bit to smooth that out. It's getting there. I just have to really work it. So probably just don't inflate it that much. Uh, you want to open up and see the inside of the model if you can help it, right? There we go. So always be careful with these sculpting tools. Don't bring the inside of the model out through the outside wall. That's never good. Uh, you can accentuate a surface detail. I've never really found this to be very useful. It sort of accentuates a little bit, but I don't know. It, this guy never did a whole lot for me, but maybe you'll find a use. Now this tool I think is great. Paint areas to prevent further modification. So maybe you really like a part, but you want to kind of like bring another part of it back. Like I really kind of like what happened here. It's like very subtle. So I'm going to paint this area, which is great. I'm going to just make sure nothing happens to that particular area. I also like this area underneath. I think that's kind of like wrinkled skin vibe to it. The rest of it I could give or take. Um, so now that I have all of that and I paint it, let me get that little bit of it. Now I could say maybe go back to my smooth tool. Oh, let me save. I'll go back to my smooth tool and I'll just smooth all the rest of it out. And you'll notice even if I happen to run over that blue area, it's frozen. That is great, right? It's kind of like, you know, a little negative area where it doesn't matter. You can kind of turn the brush up. I'm going to bring all this guy pretty much back to normal, smoothing it back out and uh, leave that area that's painted. Get rid of all this stuff because it's just a little bit extreme as I was experimenting. And I get to keep the best of what I made by painting that. And I like some of these little pushes and pulls. It's definitely way more of a strange organic form now. Uh, has potential to turn into some kind of like creature or bone or monster's head or who knows what this will turn into. Um, but again, that paint tool is very nice. I like that a lot. Um, if I go back to the paint tool, I can kind of re reset the tool if I wanted to, but um, there we go. Let's see. I think all the rest we have in here convert to frozen. Um, these are kind of like additional open content browser, blah, blah, blah. I think we're pretty good. Um, I'm going to click off of that. That's just, you know, my introduction to the sculpting tools. There's a lot more you can learn along the way about them, but hopefully that gets you going and uh, gets you playing and, and discovering how to bring more surface detail to a smooth, subdivided um, model that you create in Maya 2019. Enjoy.